Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? I'd love to talk for you to talk about your own healing journey, the things that you did that have helped you progress forward, and what some other people who are listening may be able to do as well. Yeah. And you're talking about deep conditioning, right? That's different than the NPD disorder where, you know, you, you started totally. to fixate on it, right? So I then I think we all have narcissistic traits to, to our ego uses to protect ourselves. So the important part is to work on, you know, when you were talking to me about your story, I immediately just kept hearing inner child, inner child. And I talk about it all the time on my show, the inner child work and meditation and being your parent for your own self. We all have our little child still in us. And most all of us have been taught to stamp it down and to grow up and to be mature. And, you know, oh, that's so embarrassing, you know, that you would even go out and play or roller skate or scooter as an adult. Like, we don't do that. But that's what you need to heal. So that was the, one of the biggest things that helped me heal was really asking my inner child, what do you need? And I have this guided meditation on my YouTube channel, Raven Scott Show, where you go through and you, you hold and you recognize all of the expectations and the abuse and the pain and hurt that your parents put on you and your grandparents, this ancestral heavy burden, and you release it and your adult self brings your little child out into a magical garden and you heal and then you get to connect with yourself and say hey what do you need what do you need today and then do it that's the challenging part right do you want to go build a lego set go do it do you want to go do cartwheels and dance barefoot in the grass go do it and that was a big part of my healing journey because i felt like i never could be myself i never could freely express myself and be adventurous because i always had to hold it together to make sure I didn't disappoint my family. So that, that was one of the mm. biggest things I did. Was for me, and I'm curious if this was true for you as well, being able to step into, I love you were, use the word play because it was a lot of freedom that I'm, I would imagine you discovered. That for me was incredibly discombobulating because growing up and coming through traumatic background, one of the things that you discover when you kind of like start to do this work is that the, in my opinion, this is my opinion alone, that the, the, the real truth of trauma is that it's the theft of your identity. And so going out into the world, creating that, discovering who you are, like it's hard. What? With the word empath, obviously being in the title of your book, like where did empathy come into this? Like what role did that play for you and also for like the, the people in your life at that time? Yeah, it was really hard because for me, empath kind of connotates someone who takes more responsibility than they should for mm. life, for other people's emotions, for bad circumstances. I remember just accidents happening and going, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You know, you're always apologizing for things that aren't even your fault. Um, and that's something that I really had to break free of. And my, my self-worth was down in the gutter when I was, I thought that I was really confident because I was involved with the church so heavily when I met my, um, my ex, but it was really down in the gutter. The reason I was so involved is because like you said, I didn't have a self-identity. I had no confidence to know that I was powerful, that I had a voice, that I could ask for what I wanted. I didn't even think I was beautiful. You know, I couldn't even embrace myself without makeup. Mm. And that whole, you know, concoction of being an empath and having low self-esteem, it just, uh, yeah, it made me a magnet for the narcissist and a yes, please give me more kind of a, you know, give me more emotional abuse. Cause I, I was already, you know, in my negative head abusing myself. So I was like, yeah, bring it on. I absolutely agree. Now, how can I fix myself? And the danger for me was those people would give me advice, either my family or my ex, like, oh, well, you just need to go to church more, or you need to dress up and wear high heels. Like I was getting conflicting information, but all of them were their ideas versus mm. what I really needed to do. So finding myself in the inner child work, journaling out everything, you know, journaling different desires and dreams that I had that I never really thought about helped kind of guide me. So I wasn't just wanderlust. I love that. When, when you were journaling and you were getting into that, were you being honest with yourself? Good question. 
Um, I would say half and half, whatever my ego would allow me to go as deep as I could. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Um, but even still just this last Christmas and, you know, recently I had to really be even more honest with myself about relationships that are still in my life that I didn't want to let go. Right. I didn't want to admit that they were really toxic and I had to put up certain boundaries. Um, so yeah, it's a process. I think every time you can be, you know, one layer honest with yourself at a time, be, be gentle. Yes, I think I was.